In this lesson, we're going to talk about the conjugation of the verb have. This has been requested by many students because they see have had, has had, had had, and they get confused. So let's talk about that today. Of course, I'm Jennifer from j4senglish.com and this channel is dedicated to helping you sound like a fluent, confident, natural English speaker. Now before we go any further, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified every time I post a new lesson. And let's dive in with this video. Let's talk about the conjugation of the verb have. I want to start right from the beginning so it's very clear. Now, our infinitive form of the verb is to have. Of course, we can use the infinitive in certain sentence structures. For example, I'd like to have more time. So here is the infinitive being used. Now, we can also use the base verb. The base verb is have. So we simply drop the two from the infinitive to get our base verb. We can also use the base verb in certain sentence structures. For example, I'll have time tomorrow. Here we're using it in the future simple. We need will and a base verb. Our base verb is have. I'll have time tomorrow. Now here's where things get tricky. In the present simple form of the verb, we have two options. We have have and has. Your choice depends on the subject. We use have for the subjects I, you, we, and they. For example, they have two kids. Now, we use has in the present simple for the subjects he, she, and it are third person singular. For example, she has two kids. The past form of the verb is had. This is for all subjects. For example, she had a muffin for breakfast. Now here's where things get tricky for students. Let's talk about the present perfect. So the present perfect with the verb have can be formed in two different ways. It can be formed as has had or have had. Now, had is the same for all subjects. It doesn't change. But has and have changes according to the subject. You already learned this with the present simple. So you know that we would use have had for our subjects I, you, we, and they. For example, we've had enough. And we use has had for subjects, he, she, it, the third person singular. For example, she's had enough. Now notice how I'm using a contraction. I've, you've, we've, they've, she's, he's, it's. Native English speakers always use contractions with the present perfect, so I encourage you to get comfortable with that. So just remember your choice between have had and has had depends on the subject and we use has had for third person singular, he, she, it, and we use have had for all other subjects, I, you, we, and they. And now we come to had had. <laughs> this sounds really bizarre, right? But it's grammatically correct because this is the past perfect form of the verb. Now, had had is used for all subjects, so it doesn't change. We use had had for I, you, he, she, it, we, and they. So this one is easy to remember. You just have to remember that had had is the past perfect and have had and has had is the present perfect. That's the thing that you need to remember. Now, native English speakers also use contractions with had had. So you're not going to hear a native speaker say had had very often. You'll hear the contraction and the contraction is very subtle. It's a very soft sound. I'd had, you'd had, he'd had, she'd had, it had, 
we'd had, they'd had. So it's a very soft d sound added to the subject. For example, he'd had a busy week. He'd had a busy week. So notice it sounds very similar to he had a busy week, which is just the past simple form of the verb. So let's listen to those two sentences again. He had a busy week. He'd had a busy week. Hmm. I say even a native speaker would have a hard time hearing that difference. It's the sentence structure and the rest of the sentence that will let you know if it's a simple past or the past perfect. So you have to pay attention to context as well. So this is a lesson that you're going to have to review a few times to get comfortable with it. And I definitely recommend that you just take some notes so you remember that difference. And now I want you to practice. So of course, I want you to leave a present simple sentence, a past simple sentence, a present perfect sentence, and bonus points if you can leave a past perfect sentence as well. And remember, your conjugation depends on the subject. If you found this video helpful, please hit the like button, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe. Now, before you go, make sure you head on over to my website, j4senglish.com, and download your free speaking guide. In this guide, I share six tips on how to speak English fluently and confidently. And until next time, happy studying. Wow, this was a big lesson. We talked about a lot. You're definitely going to have to watch this a few times and make sure you do the practice because it's from you writing out the sentences and seeing the subject verb agreement that you're going to get really comfortable. So take the time to write the sentences in the comments and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.